Hello and welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at Arduino and how to use it with the Raspberry Pi. I'll be covering what is Arduino, why you should use one, how to install all the necessary software to use an Arduino with your Raspberry Pi, and also how to write a simple program that flashes an LED connected to the Arduino board. In this tutorial, you're going to need an Arduino board similar to the one right there, uh, and I'm going to about to cover that in more detail in a minute. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi with the Raspbian operating system that's also connected to the internet because we're going to be downloading the Arduino integrated development environment. And you also need a USB cable similar to this and with an end like that. If you buy some Arduinos, they do a few bundles come with them and this cable is similar to the one that some of you will have plugged into your printers at home. But first, what is Arduino? This is an Arduino, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. Arduino is a dedicated microcontroller. So what does that mean? It means that the Arduino can sense and interact with the outside world. We can use the Arduino much like the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins, and um, much like the stuff that I've been doing in my other tutorials using the GPIO. The main difference being that the Arduino is not limited by Linux. The Raspberry Pi has only 10 digital output and input pins, which means that they can send signals like flash LEDs on and off, and has no analog input pins. The Arduino Uno, mine's not an Uno, mine's the Arduino Mega, I'm about to go on to that in a minute. Uh, the Arduino Uno is a very popular board, it's Arduino's kind of flagship model. It has 14 digital outputs and inputs, and 6 analog inputs. If you don't know what analog input is and the difference between analog and uh, digital, then I suggest you watch my other video, Raspberry Pi, using analog inputs, or I can't remember the exact name, but it's getting analog inputs. Effectively, the Arduino is better than Raspberry Pi for playing around with sensors and electronics, but the Arduino is also limited in the fact that it's not a computer. It doesn't run Linux like the Pi, so you can't, when you plug it in, it, it doesn't do anything. You have to actually program it from a separate computer, a host computer. And also the Arduino works with 5 volts, not like the Pi which works on 3.3 volt level logic. And um, also, so that means that you're going to be have to be careful when picking the right resistor values for your future product projects. Arduino is programmed in the Arduino integrated development environment, which I'll show you how to download and install on your Raspberry Pi. But it's you don't just have to have a Raspberry Pi to use one. You could easily use this tutorial if you want to program your Arduino on your Windows PC, Linux PC, Mac PC. All works as long as your PC has a USB port, which I'm sure it does. It's everything in the Arduino environment is programmed in C++, but kind of an Arduino tinted version of C++. Effectively, it is C++. C++ is different from Python, which we've been using in all our other videos. It's more complex, it's um, harder to decipher. However, all the basic programming fundamentals are the same. So, con uh, variables, all of that kind of stuff, if you learn about those, then it'll be pretty easy to pick up C++. But first, let me show, what, show you what you're going to need. As I said, what you're going to need is Raspberry Pi with the Raspberry operating system and it's got to be connected to the internet either via Ethernet or a Wi-Fi dongle and you'll need an Arduino of course. Now the Arduino that you're seeing on the screen is the Arduino Uno. I don't actually have the Arduino Uno, I'm going to show you the board that I have in a minute but this is kind of default Arduino board that most, if you buy a book, it will probably be using the Arduino Uno. As you can see, it's, it's quite small. It's smaller than the Raspberry Pi. My board isn't. Mine's an Arduino Mega. I'm about to show you that in a second. And it has, as I said, 14 digital input-output pins and 6 analog input pins. You can. This would do you very nicely. Um, they retail about £21 on Amazon, but there's lot, loads of places you can get them. As I said, you can buy them on Amazon, eBay, Tandy Online stock them. And uh, but if you prefer to buy all your electronic stuff from the high street, then Maplin also stock them. This is the Arduino board that I've got. It is the Arduino Mega, and as you can see, it's bigger than the Arduino Uno. It's it's one of it's sort of their high level end one. And the specs of mine is that it, it has 
54 digital input output pins whereas the Uno only has 16 and it's and it's got 16 analog inputs. As I said you're going to need a USB cable and it's USB B so as I said just like your printer and all you're going to need is one LED like we've used in my other tutorials and you won't need a resistor or any wiring or a breadboard or anything just this LED because we're going to plug it straight into the Arduino so here's how to install the Arduino IDE on your Raspberry Pi boot up your Raspberry Pi and go into the desktop environment with the command start x and you should be greeted with something like this double click on LX terminal wait for that to start up you should see a box like this and we're just going to do a few commands to install the Arduino IDE. The first command, not all of you have to do this, but some people just need to update the apt-get function, is sudo apt-get update. And you'll just be seeing that command on the screen right now. Uh, but if you did miss it, then don't worry, it's going to be in the description below. Wait for that to run its course, and then do sudo apt-get install Arduino. Now, Arduino is spelt A R D U I N O, and don't worry, that's going to be running on the screen right now. Press enter, and if you are prompted for a yes or no that you want to install, just press Y and return. And there you go, Arduino, the Arduino IDE is now installed. Now, I'll just show you how to start it up. To launch the Arduino programming environment, you're going to have to go to the start menu. There's no shortcut that's created on your desktop. Simply go to the start menu, bottom left corner, click, and then you'll see a sub option that says electronics, and there's your Arduino IDE. Click on that, and a box like this should appear. This is the Arduino IDE. As you can see, it's quite simple, and I'll just walk you through on some of its aspects. This is where you actually program your sketch. Arduino calls all of its program sketches. These are some buttons. Verify your code, see if it actually makes sense. Uh, that won't actually upload any of your things to your board. Upload, you click this when you're finished with your program. You plug in your Arduino and click upload. New, open, and save. Just default file edit and tools. This is the important bit. Depending on what board you got, you have to select. So, I've got the Arduino Mega, which is up here. Just angle the camera. Arduino Mega. But you might have the Arduino Uno, or one of the other ones like the Arduino Nano. And it depends. So, just you have to make sure that you click on the right one. Now also down here is a black box and that's where you'll get some nasty error messages if you code your program wrong. First thing we're going to do is save our program. So click Control S and save it into a workplace and it will save them as a folder and inside your folder will be your actual um, program. So I'm just going to open a Arduino project that I've already completed, it's called LED. So this is the code that we're going to need and as it, and I'll just run you through it. You probably haven't seen C++ code before if you're not used to programming and this is effectively what it looks like. The first line is just a comment and you use that with the two forward slashes and it says simple program that flashes the Arduino's onboard LED. We're actually it's not going to flash the onboard LED, this one. What it's going to do is flash an external LED, which I'm just going to plug straight in to the Arduino, and I'll show you that in a minute. First, we initialize a variable, which we use with the int command. If you know what variables are, if you don't, then I recommend you watch my other video, um, Python tutorial. And we're called pin13 LED pin. So Arduino programs, they need two... Um, two main bodies of text. They need the setup and the loop. And they have to have these. And the loop can be empty if, it want, if you want, but it has to have it. So, all you have to do is void setup, open brackets, close brackets, 
enter one line and then do the squiggly brackets and this will this basically initialize the pins as output so pin mode LED pin is output so that's just telling it that pin 13 is going to be an output and then end it with a squiggly bracket these brackets are very important otherwise your code um, won't compile properly void loop open bracket close bracket squiggly bracket digital write LED pin high so that's just writing the pin as value of high delay 500 the Arduino IDE does delay in milliseconds so I could have 50 milliseconds or if you want one second then put a thousand digital write LED pin low delay 500 squiggly bracket now this is just a very simple program and as I said it's going to start an LED flashing on and off now before we upload I'm just going to show you how to set it up here's how we're going to wire up our circuit what we're going to be using is pin 13 on here and it should be labelled on all your Arduinos no matter what if you've got an Arduino Uno, Mega or whatever and pin 13 is also connected to the onboard LED so effectively two, both LEDs are going to be flashing so remember to grab your LED remember that the short lead on your LED it goes to ground and the long lead should go to your digital pin and as I said we're not going to be needing any breadboards or any resistors because we're just going to plug it straight in this is because as I said pin 13 already controls the onboard LED and therefore all of the resistors have been taken care of and ground is right next to it so effectively all we need to do is plug it in like this make sure you get it right the way, right way around and there you go your LED is plugged in you can see pin 13 and ground there and that's it your LED is nice and firmly plugged in and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect our Arduino whatever model it is to the Raspberry Pi so get your USB cable plug it in like this firmly and then plug the other side of your USB cable into your Raspberry Pi I'm just using a powered USB hub but I think that the Raspberry Pi has enough power just about to to power the Arduino and also as soon as you uploaded your code you don't need the Raspberry Pi anymore you can unplug this and plug it in wherever you want you don't need to use the USB the USB slot to power it there's a DC power slot here or you can power it via batteries just google it on how to do so so let's go back to the computer and we'll click upload with everything plugged in and working now all you have to do is click the upload button you might want to click verify first just in case you're worried about your programming skills and that you might have uh, accidentally copied the wrong thing now if any of the pr programs wrong you're going to get errors in this box but if you copied it to the T then you'll be fine so click upload you'll see a loading box down here it does take some time to compile but not too long and as soon as that's done we can have a look at our Arduino and see that our LED will be flashing every half second so as you can see my LED is now flashing every half second as well as the onboard LED just right there so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I also hope that um, some of you will take the plunge and buy yourself an Arduino whatever board that you fancy as I said I've got the Mega but the Nano is on eBay for about £11 uh, would you like me to continue with this Arduino programming tutorial? If so, then just comment below. I'm always open to hearing about suggestions for new videos and because, in fact, ideas are running a bit thin. So comment those below or email them to me at therosipygotgmail.com. If you've got any problems, if any of this tutorial didn't work out for you, or if you just want a general Raspberry Pi chat, then also email me at therosipygotgmail.com. I'll try and get to your email or comment within a week but I do get quite a few so I am quite busy that's about it for this tutorial I please like and subscribe and don't forget to tell all your friends about my tutorials thanks and bye